Hello once again everybody, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking to build solutions on top of or extend out the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Power Automate and how we can leverage that to sort of automate our processes in the Power Platform. Now Power Automate flows an incredibly powerful tool that we've got at our disposal for developers. They can often negate the need for us writing coded solutions. Um, they're fully extensible out. They connect with a wide variety of different services and things like that. Um, and we've got routes to potentially um, extending those out further into Microsoft Azure by exporting them out if and when uh, we sort of need to. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build out a fairly straightforward power to make flow. And hopefully as part of that, you'll gain a good understanding in terms of what um, features uh, and what capabilities they sort of support. So in the Maker Portal, so we're going to go into the solution that we've been building out so far in the series, our PL400 demo solution. I'm going to click on New at the top, and then I'm going to select Cloudflow down here. Now it's worth flagging up that there's two different types of uh, flows that you can create in Power Automate. Uh, you've got a cloud flow which runs in the cloud. Uh, so typically that'll be when you're doing sort of application to application type integrations. You have also got desktop flows as well, which is where you want to introduce uh, robotic process automation or RPA into your process, into your uh, particular project. Um, Cloud flows are the only ones that are assessed from the PL400 exams perspectives. So those are just going to be the ones that we sort of look at today. So when we click on create a new flow, uh, we get the uh, Power Automate flow designer window open up. And first of all, we need to decide, okay, what is our trigger action? What's going to trigger off our flow each time? Now, what we want to do today is we want to build out a flow that basically takes, whenever we create a new account in the system, it's going to want to take the name of that account it's going to want to extract out the first four characters of that particular account, uh, put it all into uppercase, then save that back into Microsoft Dataverse um, into our account number field. So to do that, first of all, we need to select the common data service current environment connector. We want to try and use this connector as much as possible when we're working with Power Automate in the context of Microsoft Dataverse because it's going to make sure that we can introduce some ALM into our solution as we push it out. And also just keep in mind that it is also still using the old name, which is Common Data Service at the time of recording this video. So we can see when we click on it, we get uh, all of the available trigger actions that uh, the connector supports. So in this case, we can run it when a row is added, modified, or deleted. So that's going to be the one that we want. Click on that like so. It's going to sign in and authenticate as our user account into our current environment. And then we can see straight away that we can then start to select our particular trigger actions. So in this case, I'm going to select create as our particular change type. Uh, we want to select accounts, which is conveniently at the top for us. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to select organization because I'm not too concerned about the security scope of where this lands. Now, we do have some additional options here. So maybe if we wanted to ensure that we only want the flow to run when certain fields are provided, maybe we want to add in a bit of a delay so that things aren't firing straight away, we can look at doing that. In this case, we're just going to ignore that. Uh, and as we go along, I'm just going to make sure that um, I uh, update the labels for my flow steps so it's very clear in terms of what um, each step is doing. I do recommend that you do this each time. So when an account, uh, when an account uh, is created, we want there. Okay, so next step is we want to actually do the step that um, can gets our account number field generated. And to do this, I'm just going to use a compose step. Compose is a really handy uh, data operation step that you can use to sort of perform your actions in, within a specific uh, area of your flow. And then also from a debugging and from a view standpoint, you can eventually sort of review that later on. If I click on inputs, we can see that we get some particular um, parameters that come through. So because um, our action follows on from when our account is created, we actually get the full list of attributes that appear uh, when our particular record is created. And we can select any of these in our particular flow. Um, so if we wanted to, we could just maybe just get the account name field. We can work with that at any subsequent step in our flow that we've created. 
that's all well and good, but it's not going to really be too useful in terms of getting us our account number field generators. That's where expressions come into the mix. And this is using what's called the workflow definition language. It's a language that's shared with logic apps. So if you've worked with those before, you'll be fairly familiar with them. And they contain a load of different really useful functions that you can leverage to hopefully get you um, doing some more powerful things with your flow as and when you are um, working with the, with the technology. So in this case, first of all, we want to actually um, get all of our particular um, um, we want to generate our account number based on the name that's supplied. We want to make sure that's uppercase. So first of all, I'm just going to add in a two upper step. We can see we get some limited uh, IntelliSense capability on here. I can then go back onto here and select account name like so to add that dynamic field in. And then we want to just, all we can, are concerned about in this case is just the first, um, I'm going to say the first four characters that we want here. So what we can use here is the substring function. So we're going to take our uppercase name field we're going to start at the first um, um, position. So zero is always our first position, as it is um, typically when we're working with any programming language. And then we're just going to select the first four characters from that. Press OK like so, and we can see our formula gets added into our input step over there. Then the final thing we want to then do is update that back into our account record. So again, we want to make sure we selected our common data service current environment connector and we should have a step down here for update a row, which we can select. So again, we select our accounts table from before. Um, the row ID, we can actually get this from our previous step. So when our account is created, the, the ID, the globally unique identifier for that record from Dataverse should be available to us. So if I just scroll down and find it, it should be under, it should be called account, yeah, a unique identifier of the account like so. Um, and then if I just scroll down here, uh, I want to find my account number field, uh, which sometimes the order of this can be a little bit strange. So let's just see. Okay, there it is there. And then all we can do is just select the output of our step over there. Um, so let's just uh, rename these steps. Obviously, we're doing things in the best practice approach. So compose account number and then update account with account number. Okay, and our flow is actually ready to go to start testing further. So at this point, if there were any issues with our flow as we're building it out, we can use the flow checker and we should see any warnings or errors to flag up on here. As you can see on here, everything is all looking all good. Uh, we want to just make sure we give our flow a descriptive name. Um, so we're just going to call this set account uh, number field as the name of our particular flow. And then we're going to save it at this point. Give that just a second just to finish uh, committing itself. Okay, so the flow is ready to go. And at this point, if we wanted to, we can actually test it within here just to confirm that we're getting the output that we want. And we can do this by clicking the test button up here. Um, we want to make sure that we do, we manually perform the action. Uh, if it's a case that we had maybe some previous runs for this flow, what a really great feature of this is that we can actually use those previous runs to re-trigger and test our flow again. So this is quite useful, particularly if we want to work with realistic data as well as part of our testing. But for the purposes of today, we'll sort of click on manually like so, click on save and test. And at this point, the flow is going to sort of go into a sort of a, a ready to sort of a listening, ready to receive type mode. Uh, so we now need to go in and trigger our particular action within the application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our model driven app, which has got our accounts uh, table exposed out. I'm going to click on new at the top and I'm going to create my new um, account record. So I'm just going to call this uh, AdventureWorks uh, Cycles, like so. Click on save. And with that record saved, we should start to see our particular flow um, come into life here and the various action steps uh, appearing on there. We'll just give it just a few moments. It can take anywhere between maybe about 30 seconds or a minute sometimes for things to trigger. And we can see in this particular case, our actions have actually completed successfully. So if we were to return into our application now, give our record a bit of a refresh, we should see that we've got, yep, there's our account number in there. It's been able to do exactly what we wanted it to do. Let's dive in now and just take a look at exactly what we get on here because um, sometimes, okay, maybe if our flow is not working or maybe we just want to understand in terms of what's actually gone on here, we can use the flow designer and our previous flow runs to be able to inspect things a little bit further. So in this case, we can expand out when an account is created. We can see, uh, as an example, all the various attribute values that have come through as part of that save action, which is really nice. 
we can see our compose account number we can see how that step actually get actually performs and then we can confirm down here okay well yep it's gone into our row id down here we can sort of compare that against what's in our url up here we can see that yep it's the same id on here um, you know, lots of really useful details that we can sort of just view at a high level. We can click the raw outputs button to maybe view a bit more detail. Um, so this can be quite useful. So maybe if you wanted to get, let's say, a specific, let's say, formatted value field. So maybe instead of having false for do not firm, we wanted to have the allow value instead because that's more friendly for our particular purposes. We can use this to be able to interrogate that and figure out exactly what we need to grab out of here. So our flow is working really good. Uh, so just a couple of things before we wrap up, just to draw your attention to, if we click on the back button up here, we can go back and view the various different um, information points about our flow. We can um, view, um, okay, what planet's being run under. We can see what's been created, what connections is it using, owners of the particular flow. All of our previous runs are down here. We can turn it off. So when we turn it off, our trigger action won't actually um, cause it to run at all. We can maybe do a save as, share the flow with other users, send a copy of it, submit as a template. We've got a lot of different options on here. And because we're being particularly ALM conscious when we're building this out, what we also need to make sure is that at this point is that we, um, for this to be transported successfully into other environments, because we can see now if we were to refresh our solution over here, uh, we've got our Cloudflow sitting in here ready to be transported out. Um, so where's it gone? Uh, set account number field down here. We always want to make sure that um, it's done it by default in this in this case, but we want to always make sure that our connection references are included in our solution. That will make sure that when we import it into other environments, we get the option to be able to create or select a connector to use for that and that so that when the flow imports successfully, we don't have any nasty errors. It doesn't just sit in a uh, in an off state by accident. It just, just works basically when we import it. So always make sure that you've got your connection references set up and they're pointing in at the solution correctly. So that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. Um, fairly brief, in and in terms of what you need to understand from an exam point of view, this hopefully covers off the, the sort of the core details around Power Automate flows. They really are a great tool for developers to be looking at. They can simplify, um, you know, pretend, what may look like potentially quite complex requirements on the face of it. Um, so instead of resorting to things like plugins or maybe JavaScript or you know contacting web APIs directly via code, we can instead use Power Automate to actually bridge that together. And we've got a lot of capability on there that can make our make our lives a lot easier, which is uh, what it's all about when we're trying to work with the Power Platform. So thanks for watching today. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, we, there's going to be many more videos in this series and also previous videos as well covering other topics across the Power Platform Dynamics 365. So it'll be really great to have you along for the ride. Um, so yeah, so have a great day and catch you later. Cheers.